Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into the 100th episode of Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Cue the balloons and the streamers. I was going to say, it seems, seems like we should have some confetti flying around. I'll have some digital confetti uh, pop oh, up. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll go. We'll, everything's digital nowadays. We'll go that route. So Phil, Makes I thought it a cleaner, we, you know, easier cleanup. Then, that's right? true. We don't have to clean it up. <laughs> that's great. That's a great point. I thought we would do something really simple. Actually, I was stra- you know, just racking my brain trying to come up with something. Sure. And thought, well, you know what? Our podcast is turning a hundred. So let's just talk about age and wisdom. There we go. Age and wisdom. At, yeah. at 100, hopefully you've got some some wisdom maybe out of our various discussions we've had over the, the last couple of years. So Yeah, you know, and we all know we definitely get, we gain some wisdom as we age, right? And yes, what is it? Age is, the, age is the price of wisdom, right? Yep. That's that saying. And uh, we all do that. Man, I tell you what, if I only knew you know, I, we were just talking before we started rolling. My, my back is killing me. If And I'm saying, boy, I wish we did a better job of teaching our youth how to better take care of their body. You yep. know, especially back in the, you know, 70s and 80s, we got really lax uh, oh, yeah. know, with that stuff. And, uh, you know, so we, we all have this shoulda, coulda, woulda, and, uh, you know, yep. all this kind of mentality of what we could do. So let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what you've seen. You've been doing this now for many, many years. Yep. You've been helping yeah, 30, 30 years or so. Yeah. 30 years Long or so time. financially. So you, you've gained some, some wisdom along the oh, way. Absolutely. We, and yeah. we talked about that a couple of podcasts ago about, um, kind of my experience and background. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've definitely changed and ebbed and flowed to some extent. I mean, my, you know, core principles and, you know, what I believe and how I do it hasn't, but yeah, I mean, it's right. the, the approach. Absolutely. Because yeah. everything's changed. I mean, it's, you know, you gotta be flexible with, what the the market and the economy and life happens. I mean, yeah. you know. well, the math is the math, right? I mean, right. fundamentally, yep. math hasn't changed. Well, yeah, we could talk about Common Core, but we won't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for, but for the most part, right? I mean, you know, two plus two equals four, right? So you're doing that kind of stuff, but the way you maybe go about it, the way you're viewing things, the let's look at it from this lens. All that changes as we gain wisdom. So. Yeah. Let's jump in and talk about a couple little things here. What have you seen um, from your clients? Let's say so mm-hmm. people that have been with you for maybe a number of years, or or just in general people that were coming in twenty years ago uh, as a prospective client, and then people coming in you know this past month as a prospective client. Their philosophies on on money, their perspective about money, what wealth means to them. Do you tend to see that happening with people as well? They're like their perspective has changed from what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we are in definitely a different market, you know, than we've been. I mean, if you think of over that 20 years, what's taken place in a market. I mean, it's funny if, if just looking at it, look at a graph of the S and P, you know, I mean, for the first, how many years of the S and P, it was pretty slow and steady. And I mean, yeah, if you drill in, there were some ups and downs. I mean, you got the, you know, the Great Depression, all these different time frames that are terrible, but not as volatile and crazy, I think, as often as it is today because of the internet. You know, I mean, that's changed a yeah, lot of true. things with investing. Yeah. You true. know, but just kind of a, a big picture, one of the biggest change I th- think that um, clients have to, to look at today is that they're more responsible personally for retirement. I mean, 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. Your personal savings, I mean, it still played in for sure, but a, a big piece was Social Security and pensions. Right. You know, I mean, th- those were very significant components of retirement, you know, and what you did in retirement. I mean, back then, retirement wasn't all these trips and vacations and hobbies and things like it is today. You know, I think we've become uh, more socially engaged and active in retirement, which is great. Nothing yeah, wrong with that. That's fair. Yeah. But there's costs that come with that. Right. You know, so I mean, it, it's a it's a much different retirement plan today than it was, say, 20 years ago. Much simpler back then from that aspect. Yeah. Because you didn't have as much control or as many moving parts. Yeah, for sure. We went to uh, Hilton Head, my wife and I did uh, South Carolina this past week and uh, just for the weekend. And we went to a little breakfast place and you're talking about uh, just the cost of things and whatever. And so I got a waffle and two eggs. 
and she got uh, some French toast, some fancy French toast or whatever, and coffee and an orange juice. And it was almost $50. Yeah, for breakfast. Right? For breakfast. <laughs> Not a huge breakfast either, right? It right, wasn't right. massive by any means. And so, you know, we're like, okay, it's the beach, you know, and it's like, eh, but it's also not right. It's inflation and it's everything going up and Absolutely. it's just these little ticking things away. And, and some of, you know, clearly some of it was the beach as well, but in my mind, you know, I immediately kind of got like really annoyed with it. And I thought there's some age happening, right? Oh, yeah. There's some frustration going 50 bucks for a waffle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, it was Let go my ego. That. Where's the ego? It's right. <laughs> right. It was more than just the waffle, but in my mind, you know, right. it kind of kicked in. Well, this is 50 bucks for a waffle, right? So, you know, yeah, I think that's yeah. that happens to us. We, we start to have these perspective shifts and these, um, you know, mindset changes and stuff. So yep. do you see people coming in and, and saying, really wish I'd have started this sooner? Oh, absolutely. And that, that's really understanding taxes Okay. Um, beyond just current taxes, you know, unfortunately, most people's perspective of tax is, well, how much, you know, how much do I have to pay this year? What, what's the check I have to write? You know, right. how much did it cost me? What's my refund going to be? Right. You know, but it's all, all about this year. This year. And most advisors, financial advisors, CPAs, um, tax advisors, because that's the focus, that's where they look too, is that, and, and how they're judged is, you know, how did you do this year? What did you save me this year in taxes? Mm -hmm. But when you get to retirement and planning, the, the big aha moment that most of my clients have as we start to work together is like, but wait a minute, I mean, I'm not going to be in a lower bracket when I hit retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've done all this saving and tax deferred vehicles and what's my required minimum distribution? Well, I don't need that much. Well, I mean, I can't, I, I have to take it and I have to pay taxes. You know, so this whole concept of the tax burden coming back to haunt you, so to speak, at, at a later date in retirement yeah. Yeah. is an aha moment for most clients. And I hear it all the time. It's like, well, why isn't somebody telling this younger generation about this? You know, don't put everything you have in tax deferred. You got to look long term at what the, right. the right. overall net effect is. It's not just about today. Well, and it's the same conversation as to eating better or taking better care of our body. Absolutely. It, it gets said, it does get put out there, but it gets heard by very few and right. absorbed by even fewer. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, the, the problem, and it, it's not getting any better because we're in such an instant economy, right? I mean, everything happens now. If we don't see the, the gratification today, yeah. it's, it's hard to think down the road, you know? Oh, for I sure. I know it's costing me more today and it hurts today. Yeah. But, oh, but it's, I'm, I'm much better prepared long-term. As, as a CPA and been doing this for 30 years, when you were having these conversations with your own kids, let's say in their twenties, mm -hmm. did they, did they listen to the advice from dad? I mean, he's right there in it, you know? Yeah. Well, there's two pieces of that, right? I mean, number one, it's dad. So right. e even though they've aged and now that they've got kids, they start, they start to realize, oh yeah, well, I guess you maybe were right on I some of these listened, things. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's right. There's still pieces of it that, that they, yeah. I mean, so yes, they do to some extent, you know? Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's hard to get is, people to see past their own now, right? Yes. And, and I understand that. My, we talk about my kid a lot. You know, she's killing yep. it in the Navy. And I'm like, hun, you you're not touching most of your check. Put, you know, Put it away. maximize, yeah. maximize your, your TSP, right? Um, yep. You know, and, and so on and so forth. And she's like, yeah, you know, you know, and I'm like, don't, yeah, you just listen to me. Just do me a favor and listen to me. You will be happier in 30 years. I promise. But you, she you will thank me even in 10 yeah. years. I mean, if you she know, can't you, think 30 years, right. You know, yeah. and I don't blame her. I didn't either. So it's super hard to do that. And that's the, you know, that's the folly, right? We, we get into the situation where as we age, sure. we're like, oh, so maybe that big thing that we all want is just to have been able to listen better, you know? Yeah. Li listen better in, in, I mean, look beyond your current scenario, yeah. which is hard to do a lot of times, hard. you know, and I understand younger families. I mean, you know, when you got the kids and yeah. you're both working daycare, all the other components that comes in, it's, it's hard to look beyond, well, you know, if I can lower taxes today and get more spending money, maybe we can take a little extra vacation or, right. you know, which, Hey, you want to enjoy time and what you have today, but understand retirement comes a whole lot quicker than you ever think. Yeah. Your future is still coming. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, even looking at kids, I mean, all of a sudden it's like, Oh man, they're, they're going into high school. Oh, they're graduating. Oh, they're getting married. Oh man. I'm only 15 years from retirement. Yeah. What? Yeah, I've not saved anything yet. <laughs> the, uh, you know, and it happens quick. So. It does, yeah. The future train keeps coming down the tracks. Yep, uh, and it speeds sure. up. Well, speeds okay. Up the further down. So, so uh, with that in mind, as people approach retirement, do you find that they uh, they worry less or more about financial issues than when they were younger? Like you know, when you got a family, young family, I would think that's you know we're we're all we're all stressed at that point, right? Are you seeing, you know, retirees worrying less or more nowadays? Um, it it kind of depends on the, the retiree. A lot of them probably worry maybe a little more, especially on if average, it's been on average. on average, you know, if, if it's been somebody that has had a long career at a company, you mm -hmm. know, which is something that again, we don't see very often anymore, but I mean, there's, I work with clients all the time now that maybe have worked for one company their entire career. You know, 20, 30 years at one company, which is just unheard of anymore. Right, right. You know, so for, for them, yeah, it's, I think, a little more worrisome in, in retirement because you're taking away that security of, well, I've worked for the company for so many years and I've had a paycheck and health insurance. And I mean, now I've got to pick a Medicare plan and the costs are what? And I've got to do, you know, and now I've got to figure out where the money's coming from and what, you know, Social Security and pensions and all the other things that happen in there. It's just so much easier when I, had to work. You know, I just went I to that's work. True. That's fair. Eight to five, came home, got a paycheck and, you know, had my weekends. It was pretty simple, cut and dry. Retirement's a whole different ball game. So, well, and that's, that's the where you need to work with an advisor. So, right. And that's the frustration, right? Because we want to go to retirement and not worry. We want to actually stress right. less. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we're being self-serving by saying this, but that's why getting a plan and, and working a plan can help because it can help reduce some of those stresses and worries. Do you find that people have changed their opinion or are changing their opinions about legacy as they age? You know, I think um, we go through this phase where, you know, we want to leave our kids something, then maybe we want to leave our kids very little, and then we want to leave them something again. You know, we hear all those funny little stories. I, I, the one I heard not too long ago, I thought was funny was, I'm going to leave my kid a credit card statement. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm going to leave him a bill when it's done. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the reality is most of the clients I work with, their approach to this is, you know what, whatever's left, this is my retirement. I've saved all these years and sacrificed, um, not to say I'm going to splurge and spend it all and not leave them anything, but Hey, I want to enjoy retirement, do what right. I want to do. If there's something left, great, you know, yeah. and to that point, I think a lot of them are more focused on not what's left at the end, but helping them today, you know, rather than building up and you passed away and all of a sudden, boom, they got this big inheritance. Well, if you think yeah. of when that happens in their life, they're already through probably college with kids and you know, they're maybe at the lat later stage before they enter retirement. So that's nice to get a, you know, maybe a, a little bit of a boost then, mm -hmm. yeah. but it would have been nicer to have some help along the way, you know, helping with kids, education, whatever it is, housing. Right. So, and you get yeah. to enjoy it then you get and to you see get to enjoy benefit it. from yeah. it. And, Build some experiences. So. And we, we've said that before, too. I think that's the healthier way to approach it. Getting older is risky, right? I mean, yep. we, we start to be more careful where we put our feet when we step down, when we climb out of something, you know, whatever the case might be, right? We, we start to be more cognizant of falling or, you know, whatever, right, of, of an injury because it can be more problematic and take longer to heal. But it seems as though, and maybe it's just because of this environment, because of the way the market's been, we're not necessarily changing our viewpoint on risk as much. Now, some folks are, I'm not saying everybody, but it's easy to kind of say from a risk standpoint, I want to go after as much gain as I can because the market's, you know, doing great or whatever. And are you really being smart with your risk? Right. Yeah. And I mean, I, I really see kind of two schools of thought on this. Some of them, you know, that that's the approach because I mean, that's been your approach all your working career. I mean, there's a lot of clients that I've worked with that when you start talking about how they're currently invested in their 401k and oh, I'm retiring next year. Yeah. You know, I haven't, I haven't really changed that allocation. Oh, it's probably been 20 years ago, you know, so they've, you know, they've got a lot of small cap stock and, you know, foreign, I mean, they got all this crazy aggressive, which has been good. Oh, but look what it's done, you know, right. Understanding risk and, and understanding that, okay, well you under, just a different time now, right? I mean, you're spending the money now. It's not, 
just there right. growing for right. yeah. an eventual retirement. Here, you're not you're adding more money to it. Right. You know, so, I mean, there's, there's those that kind of take that approach. So you've got to understand risk and it's not taking less or more necessarily. It's understanding your comfort level, understanding risk and then positioning it the right way is really what it comes down to. Because the, the opposite end of that is those that say, oh, I'm in retirement. I, everything's got to go into CDs now because I can't lose any money. Right. So you can't but, keep up with inflation that way. Well, I was so going to say, but you're, you're losing money slowly there because yeah. you're not keeping up with inflation. So, so it's, it's types of risk and proper risk at the proper time, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's, it's types of risk and placement. You know, we've talked yeah, about placement. this many times. If you followed us on the podcast about our bucketing system and how we do it, we're our now bucket money in the bank, soon bucket money we're spending over the next 10 to 11 years. So that's got to be a more conservative approach. Later can be a little bit more aggressive because you've got time to ride through some ups and downs, which comes back to positioning, understanding risk. You need it for inflation, which I think we're all getting a little bit of a lesson on again this year is <laughs> we've seen this, well, maybe not transitory inflation now, you know, and right. how long does this continue? What does it look like? Um, right. Well, so inflation is real. It does happen. Yeah. Tell it to my $50 waffle. So that's right. <laughs> so. All right. Well, there you go. So age and wisdom. I mean, we're all aging and hopefully we're all getting wiser about the things that we want to accomplish, need to accomplish, should accomplish, whatever that list looks like for you. And at the end of the day, that's really where the value of, from a financial standpoint, it comes in with working with an advisor. Uh, you know, so whether you're listening to this podcast, wherever you might be, whether it's working with Phil or whomever, but making sure that you're having those conversations because they can bring a lot of value to the table to help in a lot of these arenas. And maybe the biggest one is, is the time, right? Cause we're, right. we're, our time is shorter. So how do you want to spend it? Hopefully you're getting wiser as you age and you enjoyed the podcast. This is number 100. We certainly appreciate people checking these out, uh, whether it's an audio form on Apple or Google or Spotify, uh, whether it's in video form on YouTube or whatever the case might be. Uh, we certainly appreciate everybody's time as always. And if you have some questions, need some help, stop by the website at philstaxhacks.com. We'll see you next time on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement facts. Investment advisory services is offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.